So time to look forward to the championship action uh, this weekend and joining us on the preview is a man that's left at the Dr. Maguire with uh, Neve Connell previously. That's uh, John Gillet. John, good to see you. Good to talk to you again. You too, Ashley. Nice to see you. Before we actually look at the games this weekend, uh, John, maybe get us a, give us a feeling as to what it's like around the parish of Neve Connell at the moment. Yes, they are playing ball. But there's this whole scenario that's still in the air about the 2020 final. Uh, obviously, people involved in the club aren't aren't talking about it. Involved in the club directly is what I mean with with the team and those who were involved last year. What's the feeling around Neve Connell, around the Glenties Fun Town area about what's went on off the back of the 2020 situation? Um, I suppose initially there will be a degree of disappointment. Um, you know that that Kilcar decided to go down this route. Um, you know, uh, people have different opinions on one thing and another, obviously. But it's it's from a from a club perspective, I would imagine, and from talking to some of the lads, like it's water under the bridge. It's over. You can't, as, as somebody once said to me, you can't put the toothpaste back in, in in the tube again when it's out. They've celebrated the victory. They lifted the cup. You know, when this saga ends, nobody knows. But all I can, you know, whatever comes out of it, whatever way it goes, if Kilcar are successful, say for example. It'll be a tick in a record book, but it won't. There's no joy to it. There's no enjoyment, and and that's the whole idea behind, behind playing sport and having the parish involved. So, uh, from a Neve Connell perspective, we, like we've had the celebration, we have the cup, we can see it in Glenties anytime if you want to come up and have a look at it. It's more 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 than welcome, and whatever happens in the boardroom in three six nine, whatever it might be, is uh, is really irrelevant. And now it's about focusing on twenty one and moving forward and, and and going from there. Okay, well, if Neve Connell are to take victory uh, this weekend, which you would expect them to do uh, comfortably against Terman, they will seal their place in in the last eight of of the competition. The likes of Gidor, Kilcar, Glenn Swilly, we mentioned Neve Connell, and the owner of Unions and Arua, if they all pick up victories in their respective games, they will secure a, a last eight berth. We'll start maybe with with Kilcar, John, who are on the road to our draw on, on Friday night. Big derby match there once again. You would expect Kilcar maybe to, to to come through that with without, I suppose, any major worries, would you? I you would anticipate that. They're going quite well. Um, they probably now what I would say about our draw, they've been improving a lot over the last number of years. That like there's a lot of work going into the club over there. Some great people in our draw always has been. And they've been building steadily and they've had some good results in this year's championship already. I know there's a little bit of doubt over the initial. The initial game, but realistically, I'm mean, right in thinking in our drag could be going on four points as well if, if that board decision goes their way or that whenever that comes into play. Um, so they're 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 building steadily. You know, there's obviously an age-old historical rivalry between Kilcar and our drag down through the years, back into the 80s. <clears throat> you know, when the, both sides were very very dominant for long periods of time. So obviously, Kilcar, one of the top teams in the county, have been there thereabouts for the last five or six years. You would anticipate that they're going to be there thereabouts for the foreseeable future as well. So all things being equal, you would anticipate that Kilcar will win. It might be tighter than maybe some people imagine or anticipate. And, you know, I see do, do see this as a young, improving Ardra side that on their day could put it up to them. But I would ex- expect Kilcar to come out on top. Uh, on to Saturday, the first game in early start, McCool's against uh, Bondoran. Uh, McCool's also an, involved, or sorry, Bondoran, also involved in that situation with our draw. Uh, the game has been ordered to replay, but it might not go on for, for a couple of weeks yet. But uh, they're playing a McCool's side who are at home, and McCool's know that, th- that they need to pick up a victory because they're winless at the moment. Yeah. So far, it's been a very disappointing championship, I would suggest, from a McCool's perspective. Um, I think after their endeavours last year, and with the amount of young again, young talent that's coming through the club. Um, they probably expected more to this year's championship. Um, I, you know, St. Michael's beat them in the first game. Um, and they probably they would have they would have been looking at that as thinking that's a game they could have won. And then obviously Glenn Swally picked them the last time round and they were very dominant in the second half and Glenn Swally just got over the line. So they were probably two games that if you were looking at them on paper, given the form from last year to this year, the McCools would have been expecting to to get something out of. And to end up with no points in that puts them in a very difficult situation. Like, if, for example, if like if Bondorn beat them in Bondorn, which is not out out of or not in McCool, but which is a could happen, and you know it's a 50-50 game, then they're under real pressure on the back end of the equation where they're going into the last game having to win a game, maybe to stay out of relegation playoffs, etc. So it's difficult for for McCool's Bondorn. They're going quite well at the moment, you know, depending on how things go and in the boardroom again for them. 
they could be looking at a, at a quarterfinal situation very easily. So a big game for both clubs for different reasons right now. Yeah, uh, the other two matches on Saturday, uh, both on the, the, the far side of the county. You mentioned St. Michael's there, uh, who had the opening day one against McCool's. They'll be looking to bounce back following the defeat at the hands of Gidor last week. Would you expect maybe the men from the, the, the bridge to come through their tie against four masters? Or is this the game that four masters are, are going to show about a maybe championship pedigree in, John? I don't, no, I don't think so. I think that they're struggling right now. Um, you know, this again, they're probably a couple of years too early. There's some very good underage sides coming through at the present point in time and are very competitive and very strong. Um, and again, you know, that was an exceptional four masters team for a number of years with the Dunyans, the Lacys, uh, the, um, and, the, and that group of, of players, Barry Monin, etc. And to have to replace that wholesale and then have a new crop coming through. They just that transition hasn't been as smooth, maybe as they are hoped. So Michaels, um, on any given day, can give anybody a game of it. They would have been disappointed against Gidor. Although, you know, Gidor, I would suggest right now, along with Neil Connell, Kikar, and, and possibly St. Units are a step ahead of all the rest, um, as has been seen over the last couple of years. So I would expect Neil Michael and uh, St. Michaels to to win that game. And um, but you know. Four Masters will be looking to put up a, a very decent showing and, and set themselves up again for, for games down the line. Yeah, uh, A lot of people would suggest St. Unions a ruin Sunday as the, as the tie of the round, but um, St. Nolls against Glen Swilly on Saturday. And the last game on Saturday, it, it has a tasty ring to it. And this could be a really, really close one. St. Nolls looking uh, to bounce back after one the last day. But Glen Swilly so far... Um, in one way, the surprise of the championship, and in another way, they're not. Uh, so two ones from two sitting joint top of the table. Yeah, and it's the draw can help you an awful lot as well. And I don't mean that disrespectfully to, to Glen Swally because a lot of you know they're a great side. They've been a great championship side over the last 10, 15 years and have really punched above their weight. Um, I thought that they were going to struggle over the next couple of years until that again that younger crop came through and better than. And obviously, you still have Michael and, and Copper and those guys still driving the ship there. They've done very, very well. They've had two good victories. As I said, you know, victories that, you know, the other side of the the, the other teams would have expected to win those games or, or felt they were in with a shout. And Glenn Swally did what Glenn Swally did and won two games. And and uh, experience got them across the line. They're looking at going up to St. Nalls. A victory brings them into the quarterfinal, which would be an incredibly successful year for the club. And St. Nalls, again, We'll be looking at Glen Swally going, okay, are they as good as they maybe as the points tally are showing? So they'll they'll fancy their chances as well. And St. Nolls is no easy place to go to. So I think that'll be a you know, that'll be a ding dong match. You know, again, what you'll be thinking is experience might swing at Glen Swally's way and it might be enough to bring them into the quarter panel at six points, but could go anyway. I think there's a lot of a lot of games in the, this time round that could go either way, particularly in that middle section as such. Yeah, we've only had one draw so far in the championship. That was a Rua and Eve Connell last weekend. That's that's Noel's Glen Swally game is the sort of match you could we could see a draw on. Yeah, and but even McCool's Bondorn has, you know, could go anyway. There's two or three matches there that could go anyway, and um it wouldn't be surprising if they went to a draw. I would suggest maybe the A Rua Neve Connell game on paper, but if you were previewing it last week, nobody would anticipate a draw out of it. But you know, football has and particularly in this type of weather, the weather's bad. Conditions under foot are bad. Uh, you know, games can take a life on their own. Uh, if you looked at the Neve Connell, um, Neve Connell Arua game, um, sorry, I just interrupted there. Neve Connell Arua game, there was a big, I suppose, thought process that Neve Connell would be too strong for them a couple of years too early for Arua, but they, they turned around the second half and went at it and got a very good result. And, and their tails will be up coming to Donald Park on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, they did give. The, the Glendies boys a bit of trouble last week. Can Terman in any sort of way trouble Neve Connell in the first game on Sunday? It's, uh, it is, of course, at home in Davy Brennan uh, Memorial Park. Glenn Finn put it up for a half against against Neve Connell in the, in the opening game. Can Terman replicate that, or is it going to be a, a day where Terman might suffer a heavy defeat like what they did last year? I think Terman have probably been one of the most unfortunate clubs in the Championship over the last two to three years. An incredibly young, gifted team that's coming through that haven't got a break at all because they end up playing Kilcar, St. Urens, New Connell a couple of times, which is never easy at the best of times, but particularly not easy for a very young team. Um, and then if you look at some of the other clubs that have got half-decent draws, you know, you can eke out a victory. So confidence-wise, it's going to be difficult. It's always, always difficult coming to Davy Brennan uh, Park to play New Connell. 
they haven't been firing all cylinders. There's a bit of a hangover there from 21 Championship. Mm. They did enough to beat Glenn Finn. They nearly got caught again in Rua. I would suggest that maybe that was a wake-up call. And I would expect to see a much more ruthless uh, Neve Connell performance this weekend. Again, I think it'll be, you know, I think Neve Connell won. I would hope that unlike last year, you know, it, it, you know hidings like that don't help either team. And I don't think it's very good for a team to get you get know, pasted like that on a regular basis. And, you know, if, if Terma could go up there and grind out a really good, solid result and, you know, have that in their drawer then for later down in the championship, I think it would help them a lot. But I think Neve Connell have too much for them right now. Second game on Sunday. Is that Marty Gallon? Are Guidor back on it again? Are they following their, their championship victories a number of years ago? Uh, they take on Glenn Finn, but they seem to be motoring good in, in 2021. And are real contenders again, do you feel, John? I do. And to me, they're the surprise packet of the championship, even though everybody you know expected them to do well, whatever. I thought they were very sluggish last year. They're really a hangover from the year before. Um, got a bit disjointed and weren't to say that they were. Um, I think they suffered badly from that, you know, four game saga with Neil Connell and, and really suffered last year in the back of it. But they're definitely backfiring in all cylinders. Very impressive, but not big stores, scores, very structured and seem to have the bit between their teeth. And to me, they're going to be a very, very dangerous outfit this year. And I th- again, I think they're down there, particularly given these, I think the weather's supposed to be not great and there'll be a there'll be a gale blowing in some direction or maybe both directions in Marigallon as tends to be the case in some days. Um, I think they'll have too much for Glen Finn. Okay. Probably a gale blowing too down in Fintra and Kelly Beggs on, on, on Sunday. If it's in one end of the county, it's bound to be in the other. Milford's going it to be the visitors be. To, to, to Fintra. How do you think that one's going to go? Again, another 50-50 game. It's one of those games that could go anyway. Um, another young side coming through. It's, it's um, probably disappointing results for both clubs. Um, and there's injuries, I know, in, in, in the Kelly Begg side of the equation as well. So, again, that's very much a 50 50 game. Uh, I think both of them will want to get a result out of it and uh, be important for them to stay out of the dogfight, um, depending on who they get on the next round as well. I would fancy Kelly Beggs at home. I just think it's a, it's a, it's a trip up there. They'll be well used to playing in Fintra. Um, and I think Kelly Beggs might just have a bit too much for Milford. Yeah, yeah. But on the other side of that, a one for Milford. All of a sudden, they go to four points with a round to go. Four points could be enough to get you into the into the top eight. So it could, John. Oh no, it could be. You see, and, and they have a lot to fight for. And as I said, they're an impressive side. What what I find about them, and I've, I've seen them in different uh, occasions down through the years, is when they're on it, they're really on it. Um, like when when they're going well and things are going well for them, they're a very very good slick outfit. They're coached well. They're fit side, and they they can put up big scores. So there's an awful lot of talent and. You know, the club has come a, a huge distance over the last five, seven, ten years and, and deserve a huge amount of credit because I know they're putting an awful lot of work into it down there. So if they can get the bit between their teeth and things go well for them early on, they'll definitely be in with the shout. And they won't go down there not fancying their chances. Yeah. I don't want to hear 50-50 for the last game. St. Eunan's against a, a Rua. Uh, John, St. a Rua. Uh, St. Eunan's, well, there, there you go. You, you made your call there. <laughs> but the Ballyshannon boys will be will be buoyed by their, their performance, particularly in the second half against Neve Connell. And uh, it could be another tight one, but it's definitely, a, with us, without doubt, is the game of the round, John. Yeah, it is, yeah. But they're all kind of games in the round in, 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 the, in, their, own, in their own particular way. You know, St. Noz, Clint Swally is going to be a game... Uh, give the round as well. I suppose there's the historical tradition, uh, Irua St. Eunan's thing that goes on there as well. And the clubs haven't met recently in quite some time um, in Championship football. Irua have done an awful lot of work um, and have really come from, you know, I think they were down as far as Division Three um, a number of years ago. And with Barry Water at the helm, they've built a really, really good, solid young outfit that plays really good football. I think the attitude coming from Iru last week against Neil Connell was they gave Neil Connell too much respect in the first half and then they tore into him in the second half and really went at it. So they, they'll they be coming down here again, buoyed by a very, very good performance. Um, St. Eunice, on the other hand, you know, were disappointed the first day, felt probably that they should have picked the car away. They probably the result or the scoreline against Herman flattered them a little bit the last day. So, it's hard to know how they're how well they're going. They're a team that I expected to have a very, very strong say in this year's championship. You know, I rated them probably up there, you know, as one of the favourites, uh, if not the favourite, given, you know, over the last number of years they should have probably beaten Neil Connell and through controversy and, you know, 
um, different thing didn't manage to do it. So I had high expectations for St. Unions this year, but they haven't been firing in all cylinders. I think it'll be a sticky game for them, but I do think in a Donald Park, you know, if the other side of the equation, if St. Unions by some stretch of the imagination didn't want it, then they're under real pressure on the other side of the, the draw as well. So I think they'll have too much for it. I think they're building. I think they have an awful lot of talent and I think they'll they'll get across the line. And I think, you know, the game with Neil Connell last week and how well Aria did will give everybody a warning across the board that you shouldn't take them lightly. Yeah. Uh, there's, of course, uh, six intermediate games on, on Sunday as well. Bunkrana, Clohany Lee, Neve Columba against Convoy, Bird against Fanad Gales, uh, Neve Alton, Dunlow, Neve Breed against Neve Wara, Malantic on Red Hughes. The situation there is Dunlow and Neve Columba. They lead the way at the top, three ones from three, and they're already in the quarterfinals. Convoy need to win against Neve Columba if they are to stand any chance of making the last eight. They currently hold that ninth position there. There's still a lot to play for in that intermediate championship, but I know, John, you probably had battles with, with Neve Columba in your time and they've really stepped up in championship football and they sort of know now that, that they're in with the shout of, of possibly getting out of intermediate and making the step up again. Yeah, and that applies the same thing that applies to the low as well. There would be two old, old rivals from the southwest of the county. We grew up playing them at underage level, particularly down low, and then Neve, Col- Neve Columba like were exceptional side, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s when you had the, you know, the Higgerties and all those guys playing incredibly tough, hard, physical team that played great brand of football. And this team has adopted a lot of those traits as well. Very attractive team, play a lot of really good, good football and have come through the ranks and, and are really setting, stepping up to the mark. Done low as well after the relegation, have really got their act together. I know in both clubs there's an awful lot of work going into it. So I think that this year, it's a really, really good intermediate championship this year. Some really good quality teams in there. Um, and I think we're going to have very, very good, you know, latter stages of the intermediate championship as well as the senior championship. Yeah, that quarterfinal draw uh, will be made after the weekend's uh, six games, which are all starting at the same time on Sunday in the Intermediate Championship. It's going to get really, really interesting now after this weekend. Listen, John, we started on Neve Connell. We're going to finish on them because the club have a, a senior championship final to play at the weekend against McCruz. Yep. It's the C decider. Um, have they tried to coach you back, have they? No, no, there, there's probably bodies they could dig up that would be probably able to move better than I am able to move right now. So there's no need. I, I think it, it, it's testament to the club and the amount of work that's gone on there. Like at every level, like I know they're doing well in the reserves as well. They're doing well at underage levels. They seem to be contesting a lot of finals and, you know, going to finals is a good habit. Um, I know Plummer's doing a lot of work over there with that side as well. And there's a nice, you know, I, I look at some of the lads in that team, <clears throat> neighbours of my own, that boys that played senior football a couple of years ago and are drifted back down through the ranks. And then they have a whole cohort of young lads coming through as well. So nice mix, nice breed, um, you know, of, of, of uh, footballer there right now. And uh, it's another final. So the club delighted to be in it. Yeah, that's senior, fee, senior C final, excuse me. Uh, it takes place at the Donald Park and Letterkenny on Saturday and it throws in at 3.30 Neve Connell against McCose. Listen, John, it's going to be another big weekend of football. We're all looking forward to it and uh, we thank you for joining us on the SCORE programme this evening to look at round three. Thanks, Oshin.